Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Smart Money. Now the RBI has raised repo rates by 50 basis points this week amidst rising concerns over surging inflation, global headwinds and a slump in the rupee to its record lows. The topic on Smart Money today is how do I protect my portfolio amidst a rising interest rate environment? What are the different tools that you can use? Today on our radar is target maturity debt funds. Our expert is Radhika Gupta, MD and CEO of Edelweiss Asset Management who joins us on the show. Radhika, thank you so much for joining us. At the onset, I wanted to ask you about whether, uh, you know, at a time like this, right, with interest rates rising across the globe and in India, are debt funds now a better option than say fixed deposits of course and also given the rising interest rates is it a good option to invest into debt funds right now so i think in terms of comparison to fixed deposits sonia i think for most investors the answer is unequivocally yes because there is a significant post tax delta if you look at the class of debt funds that we are talking about target maturity funds or even other debt funds because they enjoy the benefit of indexation, your post-tax returns over FD, the delta can be as high as 2 plus percent, which is very, very significant. Now, coming to the second question, is it a good time to look at uh, debt funds as a category? I would say yes, I think it is a good time if you're looking to lock in high rates of interest, uh, you know, for a considerable period, whether it's five years, 10 years, etc., then you want to do it when interest rates are high and why not now? So, I mean, the old the old proxy that we remember is if FD rates are high, you know, you rather block uh, your FDs for long. The same thing goes with debt funds. So, uh, it's no, there's no better time than this in that sense to lock in rates for the long term. Okay, there's no better time than now and perhaps rates could go up further, right? Of course, uh, there are just a couple of meetings left before the end of the year, but in all likelihood, the consensus is that another perhaps 35 basis points higher rates is what the RBI could do. Well, let's talk about target maturity debt funds, right? Just to understand for the benefit of our viewers, what exactly is a target maturity fund and why should I be interested in it? So I think very simply, a target maturity fund has the features of a regular bond in a mutual fund format. When you buy a bond of any issuer or a GSET, you buy it and you hold it till maturity. And if you buy it today, if I buy a 10-year bond, if I, if I hold it till maturity, I will get a certain rate of interest. A target maturity fund tries to replicate that format but it just buys a collection of bonds. Those co bonds could be GSEC, those bonds could be state development loans, those bonds could be PSU bonds. But the idea is that you buy bonds of a certain maturity, which is the target maturity. That could be 2025, that could be 2030, that could be 2020, 2037. You buy it and you hold it till maturity. So it has the features of the bond with the diversification of a mutual fund. And it is in an open-ended debt fund format. Hmm. Okay, so it's an open-ended debt fund form and means there's no lock-in period, right? Yeah, and this is a question we get from a lot of investors that when they compare it to traditional instruments, what are the lock-in sort of challenges? Mm. There is no lock-in. Uh, you know, in fact, we've been running this category now for three years. They also actually are very, very liquid. So in, in our AMC, we have processed very large single lay redemptions and subscriptions also. So because the underlying is very, very liquid, uh, you know, that is not a challenge. Plus, these are open-ended funds in the first place. Okay. Uh, can you compare it to an active debt fund? Uh, of course, you told us that it's open-ended, so that is a big difference. But apart from that, uh, in terms of returns, in terms of perhaps other pros, um, how does it compare to an active debt fund? So there are lots of categories of active debt funds. But if I were to take something that is a common proxy, which is maybe a banking PSU debt fund or a corporate bond fund, um, or maybe a medium duration fund, these are fun, or guilt fund actually, these are not funds with declining duration. In a target maturity fund, your maturity and duration decline over the fund life. In a regular actively managed debt fund, you are always carrying duration risk. It could be two to three years, it could be four to five years. In the case of guilt funds, it could be eight to nine years. Now, what does this mean for the consumer? In a target maturity debt fund, because it's like a bond and you're not, you're carrying a uh, declining duration. Basically, if you buy and hold over the tenure of the fund, 
you actually have a predictable return, which is why the category has grown so much. So if I am entering today with a yield of say 7.5 on a 2037 target maturity fund, and I stay invested till 2037, I am likely to get that seven and a half percent. This experience you can't re replicate in an actively managed fund where, where you enter, where you exit, all that starts to matter. So timing matters a lot more in an actively managed fund. It doesn't matter in a passively managed fund. There's a high predictability of returns, which is what has worked. The one category of old school actively managed funds that was similar to this was FMPs, but they had their challenges of not being transparent. They were closed ended, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. How do I identify target maturity funds as an investment option? And I'm also asking because, you know, we did see uh, issues like, say, the ILNFS crisis a couple of years ago. Um, and a lot of people believe that you don't know what kind of paper. Of course, uh, target maturity debt funds invest in high quality AAA, government paper, etc. But how do I identify uh, target maturity debt funds as an investment option? So you have to look at uh, broadly two or three things. One is, of course, you have to look at the maturity of the target maturity debt fund. And, you know, I'm just giving you a quick rundown because there are so many launches happening in this category as I see it. So one, you have to see the maturity and you have to align your goal to the maturity. So, uh, you know, if you have money that you need in 2026 and 2030, pick two funds, 2026 and 2030. The second is you need to look at the underlying portfolio since you pointed out credit issues in the past. You need to see what the target maturity fund holds. Each target maturity fund, because these are passively managed funds, has an index. And SEBI has very tight rules around what indices can be like and how you measure to the index. So the index will tell you what the composition of the fund is. And the fund manager really can't deviate from the index. So usually target maturity funds have either GSEX, which is completely government of India, state development loans, which also carry a sovereign rating, or AAA PSUs in the case of something like Bharat Bond, uh, which I would call it the category of quasi-sovereign. So today, the universe of target uh, maturity funds is either sovereign or extremely high credit quality. But you need to look at the index that your target maturity fund has to determine what it's going to hold. Actually, it's become a buzzword, right? Now, I mean, I've seen that in the last uh, six to eight months, uh, target maturity funds have really picked up. Why do you think that is, Radhika? Up until now, there was not so much talk about it. Of course, we're also now in a rising interest rate scenario, so it helps. But uh, in general, why do you think the popularity has gone up now? Yeah, I think the category uh, sort of started in late 2019 when Bharat Bond launched mm -hmm. and um, we've studiedly seen flows in that. To give you an example, we have something called the Bharat Bond Fund of Runs program, which is really retail kind of money. Uh, and that started at a couple of hundred crores back in 2019. Um, but people kept adding it's now 17,000 crores. And, you know, interest rates have gone up and interest rates have gone down in that regime. I think what has worked for people is the whole element around predictability of returns. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, now a much wider set of asset management companies are participating. I think consumers have tasted these funds. They've tasted the experience in the funds. In fact, in a rising rate environment, I should also tell you that, Sonia, uh, people like us have hardly seen redemptions because the mindset really has been, okay, I've invested till 2030. I'm not going to redeem this money. Um, so I think a positive consumer experience over the last couple of years, understanding of the asset class has probably led to the increased popularity. And it is truly, I mean, you know, we are launching a 2037 product as we speak. The net benefit versus FD on that one post tax is almost 3%. Now, that's very, very substantial. Absolutely. And at a time when I think other asset classes like equities are going through a bit of a challenge, right? When there's a recession globally and risky assets are not preferred, maybe target maturity debt funds uh, are perhaps the way to go. Let's do one thing. Let's take a quick commercial break. We have many more questions for Radhika, so don't go anywhere. We also have our financial health tip of the week, so you'd want to stay tuned in for that. We'll come back in a bit.
Welcome back to Smart Money on CNBC TV 18. In a rising interest rate environment, we're talking about several options that you can use to safeguard your portfolio amidst rising rates and target maturity debt funds are perhaps one of them. Uh, we've spoken about how these funds have a targeted date of maturity and there is of course a, a visible return that you can get. So they're of course better option than FDs, a much higher return than FDs and perhaps a little more secure than equities which seem to be volatile at the moment. Radhika Gupta, uh, the MD of Edelweiss Mutual Fund has been explaining to us, so it's a complete masterclass on this product. Uh, but do tell us Radhika, what are the different products that are available in the market to choose from if I need to invest in a target maturity fund so the good news is i think the range is vast and it's expanding um you know if i look at the two dimensions maturity and issuers uh today you have products all the way from a 2023 maturity which is a target maturity fund uh you know for next year uh all the way till a 2037 maturity actually now so you have a very vast range all the way from 1 to 15 years as i said uh globally what people do is they use these funds to do laddering so you can really take your goals uh, and mix and match target maturity funds across the yield curve and figure out what works for your need. So that's on the maturity spectrum. Uh, on the issuer spectrum, you have a couple of categories. You have uh, pure GSEC related funds that are out there, uh, which is only government of India. Uh, you have uh, funds that combine government of India, GSEC uh, and state development loans. So there are a few out there there. And you have funds that are pure AAA PSU, Bharat Bond being the largest and sort of most prominent one uh, in that series. And then you have funds that are a combination of all three. But this is the quick lay of the land. So in summary, you have the range of maturities from 2023 till 37. And then within that, you have broadly three different kind of issuers and you do your mix and match within that. Okay, the Bharat Bond ETF, of course, everyone knows about. Unless you've been living under a rock, you won't be familiar with it. But still, you know, for the benefit of our viewers, let's talk about that. Uh, it's a target maturity debt fund. What are the kind of opportunities that I can have if I invest in that one? So yes, Bharat Bond is the first target maturity uh, debt fund. Um, and today there are four series of Bharat Bond out there, 2023, 25, uh, 30, 31, sorry, and 32, 5. Um, and uh, Bharat Bond's underlying is a uh, triple a public sector companies uh, so that is what you get uh, the program is now it's of course a government of india backed program so bharat bond is uh, from a 2019 launch about a 50000 crore program today um, and uh, you know with bharat bond what we've really seen is individuals come in and use the bharat bond and target maturity construct uh, as i said to plan different kinds of investment needs across the yield curve spectrum so we've spoken throughout the show about the pros, right? The advantages of investing in target maturity de uh, debt funds. Any disadvantages? And for someone who perhaps has a high risk profile, right? A young investor, who, yeah. uh, which our show generally caters to, uh, what percentage of their portfolio should be in these funds? Sure. So I think one disadvantage or one caveat I would say that I would point out is while there is predictability of return, the predictability of return is over the holding period. In the middle, there will be volatile mark to market and that volatility of mark to market will be higher if you pick a longer series. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens sometimes, and I have seen consumers, they look at the curve and they realize a 10 year bond is yielding a much, a 10 year Bharat bond, for instance, is a much higher rate of return optically than a three year one. But while you will get what you see in 10 years, in the middle, there will be volatility. And that's something you realize if you withdraw prematurely, you will not get that rate of return. So I think this is a very important caveat to me, right? That the return committed or the return shown is over the target maturity. It's not intermediate and there will be intermediate volatility. Uh, for a high risk investor, look, this is a debt asset allocation. It's not an equity asset class. Uh, I think on this show and, you know, in many other forums, I said asset allocation is extremely important. Your equity allocation is your equity 
allocation and nothing takes away from that. This is a great way. This category is a great way. You can do your entire fixed income asset allocation using this category of funds. So you do equities as you need to do. And then your fixed income allocation, which I believe everybody should have. It could be 10% if you're very high risk. It could be 80% if you are not so high risk. That can be done through target majority funds. Oh, absolutely. I mean, as they say, don't put all of your eggs in one basket, right? Especially when times are challenging like they are right now. Since you spoke about equities, we have to talk about that. And that brings us to our financial tip of the week. Every week, we give you one financial tip uh, so that you can become healthy financially. Uh, well, today we're going to talk about the advantages of investing in hybrid funds. Now, as we know, hybrid funds are mutual fund schemes which invest in more than one asset class. They invest in equity, debt and other asset classes depending on the investment objective of the scheme. Now, the advantages of investing in hybrid funds is that it balances your risk and return. The biggest advantage of a hybrid mutual fund is that it allows investors to balance risk and return. So the equity portion will earn better returns and the debt part will earn steady returns at lower risk. Hybrid funds are also considered a good option for new investors who are a bit uncertain about the market as it provides stability even while testing the equity market's volatility. And you know, Radhika, I wanted you to come in on this because is it a better option to invest in a hybrid fund which perhaps has both the equity and the debt component? Or do you invest in a pure equity fund and then for your debt portion, you look at, uh, you know, something that we spoke about, target maturity funds. How does it, what is the better way to look at it? Okay, so, you know, I think one is it's very important to do asset allocation, whether you do it through a hybrid fund or whether you do it as equity plus fixed income. So it's very important to do the asset allocation. Now, I personally love uh, hybrid funds. I find them tax efficient. I find them extremely tax efficient in the way that they do the rebalancing. So I put a lot of my own personal portfolio because I'm a conservative investor into a product like Balanced Advantage Fund, which is a popular uh, hybrid fund category. So, uh, you know, I, I'm a big fan. Uh, what sometimes, uh, you know, people assume with hybrid funds is that they are all in and they solve all of your problems. Uh, that often may not be the case because every investor has different needs. So what I recommend is you can use a hybrid fund for a part of your asset allocation, and then you can supplement it with a couple of other things to complete it. So for instance, I supplement mine with mid cap and small cap exposure. Uh, you can supplement it with target maturity exposure if you need to keep debt money away for a certain period. So I think that's the way to think about it, but they are a fantastic asset class because the equity debt allocation one is automated uh, and second is very tax efficient okay uh, what are the hybrid funds that you guys offer if you'd want to just leave us with that sure so i think we, we offer the full range uh, my favorite is of course <laughs> advice balanced advantage fund i think that is the most popular, most category, popular. Type category of uh, hybrid funds equity debt about uh, 65 equity on average and ranging between 30 uh, and 80 then, of course, we have an equity savings fund, which is one third equity, one third arbitrage and one third debt. And then the more aggressive, aggressive hybrid, which is about 75 equity and 25 debt. So there's a hybrid fund also for every need. Okay, fine. Uh, it was really fun speaking with you and learning so much about, you know, this asset class target maturity funds that not too many people know about. So uh, thank you for that. But before we let you go, you know, the big headline and something I, I saw you retweet as well is how there's a big improvement in financialization of savings, right? I mean, mutual funds uh, as an asset class has as a part of people's savings has gone up 120% year on year in FY22. At a time like this, Radhika, when there are so many challenges globally, when the market on the whole is not doing that well, what is your recommendation? Should one keep powder dry for a bit or should you continue your SIPs, put in that big chunk of money irrespective of what's happening globally? I think, um, and you know, I won't go into market outlook here, but I would say stick to your asset allocation, uh, continue your uh, SIPs. If you want to, uh, because there are deep corrections, take advantage of it by adding to equities, etc. You can do that. Certainly, what you should not do is use this opportunity to panic and exit. And that's the most unfortunate thing that happens to investors in periods like this, especially new investors who've come in in the last couple of months uh, or couple of years. Uh, the one thing you should not do is panic. Um, 
good things to do or take positive action if markets fall, but not everyone has to take action. I understand that. But stick to your SIPs, stick to your asset allocation. Okay, Radhika, it's always a pleasure speaking with you and especially, you know, for these uh, educational shows because we get to learn so much from you on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for joining in and have a great weekend. Thank you. Well, folks, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Smart Money, a special show where we spoke about debt funds, fixed income, and within that, target maturity funds. You can leave us with uh, all of your feedback on social media and write into us as well. Until next time, have a great weekend.